Hello everyone, Nick here. Uh, first of all, apologies for some sound outside. Uh, Cross the road's having some works done. But this is basically another one take um, video that I'm doing. Um, no edits besides maybe pausing on the video. Um, basically my reaction to the recent Doctor Who Doomsday, hashtag for to Doomsday, reveal kind of thing that was announced uh, today. It's 21st of March 2023, Tuesday the 23rd to be precise. So it was revealed yesterday, Monday the 20th, that um, this new um, multimedia, expanded media um, story called Doom's Day. That's Doom, uh, apostrophe I think it is, S, Day, not Doomsday as in the full title, the full word Doomsday, um, like the Series 2's finale or for to Doomsday, with which the hashtag is kind of a play on. Um, also, I'm going to react to the recent news of the unit spin-off being announced. I'll start with that. I actually didn't think this was an official confirmation until I double-checked it. Um, but yeah, apparently we're getting a unit spin-off. Yay! Um, TV spin-off, that is. This is not Big Finish. They, they were doing the new series audios. They started those up again not too long ago, but they, I think they've stopped again. Um, they did do them for a couple of years, from 2015 to about 2018, 19-ish, and then they stopped for a bit, and then they did another one or two recently, but stopped again. Um, and similarly, they had an older uh, unit audio miniseries that I've reviewed on Hooniversals that ran from 2004 to 5, and there's been a few other unit stuff in between, like Unit Dominion, which um, guest stars the Seventh Doctor, and brings in a alternative version of Big Finish original character um, Elizabeth Klein and introduces the Alex McQueen master. Ooh, interesting. We'll have to listen to that at some point. And also this other one for Worlds of Doctor Who featuring Daphne Ashbrook and Yeti Toso as unit characters teaming up with Richard Franklin's Mike Yates. Apparently they're do with something else in the Big Finish range, but yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so... We've had quite a few unit spin-offs before um, from the audios and probably from the books as well. There's been some Brig Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart books out not too long ago. But it'd be interesting to see a unit television series. This was one of the spin-off ideas pitched by Matt and Thomas in their What If They Were Doctor Who Showrunner spin-offs video. And it would be a very interesting idea, especially with characters we know, like Kate Stewart, who is confirmed, played by Gemma Redgrave, uh, confirming Gemma Redgrave's return for Series 14 and the spin-off. So that'll be interesting to see. Some theories have said it could be a new Torchwood, which could be, maybe. The 2004-5 series I described in my Universals review is kind of a proto-Torchwood in a sort of way, because it felt more like Torchwood than say some of the stuff the unit new series would probably get up to but then again maybe i haven't heard the new unit, unit new series audios yet so maybe they've got some talk to the torchwood element or sarah jane adventures element but with unit it's yeah to be honest these these could probably kind of cross over in terms of similar similarity but that's completely fine it's just the next next thing uh, next um the latest stage of that so long as it doesn't become stale and boring then it should be fine uh, similarly, there's also the monster spin-off that was announced a few months ago, and it could be interesting if it's an anthology series where we have like um, like a couple of episodes a series, and they feature on a monster of the of the week, say episode one to Daleks, episode two the Sidemen, three to the Weeping Angels, etc., etc. I'm not sure about an entire spin-off series dedicated to just one monster. The Daleks have had several of those already. Anyway, we've had the Doctor Who annuals from the 60s and some comic strips from the 60s and 70s and of course again big finish doing a couple series of audios on dalek empire in the early to mid 2000s and following that up with a series for the cybermen as well actually it was two series for the cybermen and four for the daleks so daleks and cybermen have already gotten their own spin-offs and yeah I mean, they could have their own tv spin-offs as well but yeah i don't know if it would work for every monster or a couple of monsters i think so only like a couple of certain monsters like daleks and cybermen so i think an anthology series would be very good if they were going to go down that route and we just have like an hour of television for let's say eight weeks so eight hour long episodes for example 
and you have eight monsters and they have an hour to do their thing when the Doctor is not around. Maybe you have a couple of likeable supporting characters as well to be the protagonists or antagonists in some cases. Like, say you have a Silurian episode where they're actually portrayed as the good guys. Or a Jadun episode where they're hunting down criminals who are even worse than, say, the Plasmavor or... Um, what's his name from Sarah Jane Adventures... Uh, the, ve the was it the veal guy? Um, Andrew Vax. Um, could ha could have some um, even worse creatures introduced, or not as bad creatures introduced. So we'll have to see how that goes. But the unit series, I'm certainly more looking forward to because it's um, was part, as well as possibly being the modern Torchwood as well as incorporating stuff from the Big Finish audios, both original and new series, it's also going to be an interesting way to show the expanded workings of the current unit team, or whatever the current unit team becomes in series 14 onwards, and how they operate across the board. That'll be interesting to see, especially with Kate Stewart, who's basically the modern brigadier, um, following in her father's footsteps character-wise. That would be very interesting. And I'm sure there's some pretty good ideas in there as well. Units will be returning for the 60th anniversary specials. But I'm not sure if Kate's in, the, in them. But she will be in series 14. Along with the units themselves. And this other mysterious character. Who looks like he's going to be a. Well both a political character. And a villain. Actually that's kind of one of the same things. When it comes to Russell T Davis written characters. Who are politicians. Except Harriet Jones, for the most part. So, there was that bit where she was villainized at the end of Christmas Invasion. She did make a bad choice, but for the most, but apart from that, um, she's the exception to the rule. Okay, on to Doomsday. That's Doom's Day. Play on words. Okay. So this is going to be a new multimedia platform story spread across a big finished productions, Penguin Random House, Doctor Who Magazine, East Side Games, I believe. Uh, that's the one I was trying to remember. Um, and now there's another one that, oh, Titan Comics, that was it, and BBC Audio. So across this, plus also the digital social media platforms of so YouTube, Twitter and so forth. So we're going to have the digital stuff, which including the finale. But in between, we're going to have like audios from audio dramas from Big Finish, audio books from BBC Audio. We're going to have comics from Titan. We're going to have books from Penguin Random House. They'll probably, they may also get audio um, book versions as well from BBC Audio as well, possibly. I'm not sure if the Time Lord Victorious ones did. Uh, we've got, by the looks of it, games from East Side Games um, and comics and other stuff from Doctor Magazine. I wonder if they'll also have an escape room and maybe a Road to Doomsday Blu-ray with a booklet about stuff that is on about that somehow ties into Doomsday, as well as also figurine magazine booklets and t-shirts that glow in the dark that all have either information about what's going on to the event or are crucial parts of the events just like time lord victorious did <laughs> probably not any of those although a blu-ray release featuring more classic doctor who stories from the recently released a collection blu-ray range as well as a couple of new series ones in thrown in for good measure would be rec would be preferable i would like to have one another Road to Doomsday Blu-ray, similar to Road to uh, Time Lord Victorious, even though it's just a couple of classic stories from the collection range and some, uh, in the case of Time Lord Victorious, Temp Doctor stories released on already released on Blu-ray, being re-released in this set. But you know, it'd be, it'd be fun to see how which stories they pick for Doomsday. They could definitely do Four to Doomsday and Army of Ghosts and Doomsday at the very least, because of the just because of the name titles, and the clock does strike 11 so it would be a massive missed opportunity if they didn't release anything to do with the 11th doctor or 10th doctor point one or 10th doctor either point one or point two hmm 
Eh, anyway. But yeah, so Dune's Day is, as mentioned, it's going to be a multi cross platform event, just like Time Lord Victorious, which saw books. And the main finale of that was, was, was the second book. It had audios, including a 8th and 10th Doctor crossover audio that was exclusive to vinyl. Possibly also a download, but it definitely wasn't CD, it was vinyl instead. And then you got an 8th Doctor trilogy that was on CD and download. Uh, there was only two books. One of them, I think, was a 10th Doctor only, and the other was a, was 8, 9, and 10, because it was a multi-cross platform across for 8, 9, and 10th Doctors. Uh, Nine had most of the big the Doctor Magazine stuff. They did the comics there. I think there was Tenth Doctor Dalek um, comics, the Tenth Doctor and Brian the Ood figure set, which I've got, plus three Dalek ones. The Daleks uh, webcast series um, released on YouTube, which I saw. That <laughs> uh, story wise, it's fine. Animation. Oh, God, and we thought Web of Fear Part 3 was awful. Animation version. We thought that was bad. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm usually slagging off Reign of Terror's two animated episodes. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it could be worse. It could be, it could be the webcasts. Apart from Scream the Shalker. No, because it's, it's no Scream the Shalker. <sighs> anyway, but... Yeah, so Time Lord Victorious had quite a few of this stuff as well. Oh, it had another BBC audio um, audiobook, which I think was download only. Um, I think this one is going to be a CD and download for Doomsday. They've already announced what that one already. Um, or at least pre put it on a pre-order site, at least, um, on Amazon. And uh, there was a couple of other stuff here and there as well. As I mentioned, it was like an escape room or game or something to do with it. Uh, apparently, the fourth Doctor escape room game... Thing with a Dalek was somehow tied into it somehow oh and that was an audio as well that was an audio um not a game uh, escape room um there was a fourth doctor audio somehow tying it all in yeah they, it wasn't just eight nine and ten they kind of brought in a couple of other doctors here and there four had an appearance eleven had an appearance I think Metacrisis attended at some point um the war doctor might have there was a, there was a couple of others brought in here and there but it was mostly eight nine ten especially ten well, unless you go to the oldies, in which case eight. But yeah, as for Doomsday, we're going to be focusing on the new character, Doom, played by this actress who, like, his name I can't remember, um, Shun something? Um, I might put it into the description if I remember. Um, but yeah, so she's a comedian and actor, and we've had comedians who have been great in the past, They like mainly as companions, and they've all been brilliant. Catherine Tate, Matt Lucas, Bradley Walsh, and most recently, John Bishop. So, yeah, this, could the streak, may, may the streak continue? Well, unfortunately, the, the, she's written to be the greatest assassin in the universe, so um, Doom it, whom is apparently the greatest assassin in the universe, but the way she's written and the way she's directed and the way the actress performs her, it's kind of feel it doesn't feel that way. It feels like more of a comedic character, um, kind of like an eccentric Osgood, but prepared to be an assassin, trying to sound a bit tough at the beginning and spots across the, uh, the first announcement teaser. I suppose this could be the introduction um, minisode trailer thing. For Doom, which looks tacky. The background, it, it, I, I, I mean, I was complaining about the CGI in the Chibnall era, how it was overusing the CGI, how it over relied on it, especially for Flux, though because of the fucking pandemic, I don't blame them for that. But even, be, even before Flux, it was kind of using it, using it quite a lot, and it didn't look that great. It definitely looked more obvious. Compared to, say, some of the visual effects from Series 1 to 10, even if some of that's a bit dated by now, certainly some of the earlier ones, it still holds up for the most parts and certainly looks a bit more natural for the most parts. Not to discredit the visual effects guys on Series 11 onwards, but it definitely feels like the CGI is 
very obvious and has been overused, especially thanks to the fucking pandemic for Series 13 and specials. Except for Eve of the Daleks, not Eve, yeah, Eve of the Daleks to a lesser extent because um, that was a very practical story. A bit of visual effects here and there, but for the most part it was a very practical story, which is probably why I, li I, li I prefer it more than most other people do. Because it's, it's kind of a bit of a break from the CGI fests that we had with Flux. I guess that's why Vintage of the Angel is one of my favourites as well. It's a very practical one too. Anyway, um, a bit of dust there. Anyway, so the background here, oh god, <laughs> you can tell they filmed on a green screen. It's not not as well as some of the other some other trailers they've done that they that they would have needed green screen and visual effects for, like the collection box. It's sometimes you can tell that's filmed on a green screen or a specific set, but they usually make it look really good. And when they go practical, they go really good for the majority, most parts. The only thing I'd probably say is that that Sea Devil in that one looks worse than the ones from 2022's Legend of the Sea Devils. And the original Sea Devils, if they both were wasting away in somebody's um, closet, uh, wardrobe without any sunlight. Actually, no, that's the opposite. That's, the preserv that's preserving them. If they then entered the sunlight. <laughs> anyway... But the trailer isn't exactly that great. The Dooms trailer isn't very great. And the performance is kind of... It's too comedic. I think if they wanted to make the assassin more credible threat, they both write and direct them more as a kind of a, a dangerous villain or anti-hero. And they cast someone more appropriate to that. But they casted this actress, who's probably going to be great... Oh, at least good. She's probably going to be good in it, in the role. She's probably a great person and a good performer. But I don't know. The character just doesn't quite fit the personality. The personality doesn't fit the description and the performance feels too comedic. So maybe going with a comedic uh, performer for this character doesn't quite work as well. And they don't seem to be adapting to the a uh, more serious... They don't seem to be adapting to a more serious character like the aforementioned Catherine Tate, Matt Lucas, Bradley Walsh or John Bishop did, especially Bradley Walsh. Um, he was fantastic in the in the dramatic dramatic scenes. So, yeah, and it, so I'm not sure whether it's the, the, whether they just haven't done a very good job writing the character yet or if the performance and or direction just feel more tailored towards the actress rather than making this a really interesting scare and a dangerous villain slash anti-hero that we're going to be following. We haven't even heard that much information about Doomsday. I mean, it's a decent setup to what's to come. Doom only has 24 hours before death, literal death, comes for them. Although whatever death form takes the shape of, it's probably not going to be as good as the one from Puss in Boots 2. Am I right? Anyway, and so they've got targets to kill in the next 24 hours. So we're probably going to get like 24 stories or something from the multimediums. And Doom has 24 hours or less now because the clock's ticking down to find the Doctor for some reasons. She needs to find the Doctor to stop death, I guess, um, or to kill them, to save herself or something. I don't know. Or die trying in the process, um, which is preferable to literal death coming after. So she is she's death still gets what they want, but not how they want. A bit like death in Puss in Boots too. Huh. I wonder if these guys saw Puss in Boots two before they started work on this. Hmm. Anyway, but yeah. The trailer's not that great. The performance is kind of a bit all over the place. And the writing is all over the place. Some I've heard some people say it sounds like something from the uh, from the Chibnall era. I suppose because we are kind of in that um, Whitaker to Tennant era balance. Like we're transitioning from 13th to 14th Doctors. And we're getting 14th Doctor expanded media stuff already. But we're still, t in terms of the television stories, we've had the, the regeneration 
but we're kind of in between the the regeneration and the post regeneration stories. Although I suppose that Doctor Magazine comic that's still going on is technically the post regeneration story. But in terms of the television stuff, we're in that we're in that gap between the end of the last Doctor's era and the start of the next Doctor's era or current Doctor's era, so to speak. And so it does. So it does feel like it's a bit of a a. a, a, a remnant of the last era still sticking about because we haven't started the next one properly yet in terms of television stuff anyway it's also interesting to wonder which doctor doom will end up meeting will it be 14 will it be 15 will it be 13 will it be one of the classic ones will it be one of the first four of the new series ones that's 9 to 12 yes that depends if what they get david Tennant to do if he's going to be involved um but yeah, it's even going to be one of the official Doctors. Are they going to meet a non-canon Doctor, like the, the Rowan Atkinson Doctor, the Lenny Henry Doctor, Schalke? I'm actually thinking it's Schalke. Anyway, but, yeah, it, it just feels like a bit of a... It feels like a bit of an odd choice to go down for this multimedia platform, because at least with Time Lord Victorious, we knew the 10th Doctor, and we also had the 8th and 9th Doctor and Rose Tyler come along for the ride, plus Daleks and Brian the Huge. Brian was a new character, but he was a nude, so that ties in. Doom, so far we've just got the brand new character, which is fine, but there isn't really a huge hook other than the 24 hours to find the Doctor situation. Mm. And I don't know how many of the stories will work well with just Doom. Maybe the comics will probably do fine with just Doom. Um, Doctor Magazine comic might do fine with just Doom, but I don't know. Maybe the big, maybe big finish. It's a big, it's a box set, and at the very end, Doom finally meets the Doctor, and it turns out the one she meets is Paul McGann's eighth Doctor. What? We, we're gonna have more McGann. Also, it's usually McGann's eighth Doctor who may pop up in a spin-off box set, or Colin Baker's sixth. It's very rarely Peter Davison. Very rarely the fifth Doctor. If it's anybody of Doctor 4 to 8, it's usually 6 or 8. Maybe 4 if it's fan service It's very rarely 5. And then, of course, we've got 1, 2, 3 and War 9, 10 for Big Finish. And books, comics, audiobooks, all of them. Um, in, oh, also the War, the Fugitive Doctor. Also it's apparently coming to Big Finish although not much news on that yet but apparently she's coming to big finish so maybe her as well um but yeah and i'm still holding out for possibly an 11 or 12 joining at some point maybe for once in future past but we'll see how it goes by the way where's jonathan carley for that like they've got they've got actors for doctors one to ten but where's jonathan carley as the war doctor for once in future past where's jonathan fucking awesome carley he's the best um, the voice impersonator of a previous Doctor, with the possible exception of John Coleshaw. After, but besides John Coleshaw, Jonathan Carley is the best. Where is he for Once in the Future Past? Where's the War Doctor? You can't say it's not the War Doctor who's the one who gets injured in at the very start of the story in the Time War. Sorry. Sorry, I kind of went on a bit of a ramble. I'm just surprised Once in the Future Past have confirmed Jonathan Carley's War Doctor, considering they've got the other ten Doctors in their roster at the moment. Anyway, but yeah, as for Doom, eh, the, the trailer looks bad, but character-wise, not great, but maybe they'll get better down the line. A couple of friends of the Hooniversals and a couple of other fellow Hooniversals members themselves aren't fans of Doom as she is in just this trailer. In fact, Zach, friend of the um, Hooniversals, hi by the way if you're watching, outright hates her. He outright hates her, Wait, and to, I can't really entirely see why, but I do. I can kind of see why people don't like the character. It's just not. It's not that great. But it is just one minute trailer. It's just the very first impression. Not a great in first impression, but it's that's it. We haven't had anything else from her yet. We're going to get that later down the line. But already he hates her, and you know I won't say. I I can't see why not. Uh, but I will say it is a bit too soon to make that um, to make a definitive call. But 
it's a very kind of a the reception's been bad, basically, to this. It's not not so much the multimedia platform, although I did hear one person claim a uh, crybaby about it. It's like, oh, it's cross media platforms, the pe people, the television series, blah, 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 some wine, wine, something, wine. Um, blah. Dude, if you're not interested, don't get involved. Or if you only follow certain pieces of media, don't get involved with the rest of it, or don't get involved with e any of it. Um, simple as. And, yeah, it's it's going to be a bit convoluted, like Time Lord Victorious. I still don't know how that wrapped up. Maybe I need to read... I have to read the books at some point. But, yeah, that was a bit all over the place. So it really has to be a bit more of the structural narrative. Maybe if they've got a bit more of a, a stronger timeline with this one, like the time... Like, ah, the, the 24 assassinations and Doom going from when she gets... She from the introduction video to the finale, which is going to be a digital story. So that to the finale at least is going to be digital, like the Daleks webcast series and this introduction video. At the very least, it's going to be like a minisode or something. Um, well, I guess you probably will meet Paul McGann then, or David Tennant as the Fourteenth Doctor. But yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what pieces of the stories are for rich medium and where they line up hopefully like i said the timeline is going to make a bit more sense as there's a bit more of a linear timeline for this one than time lord victorious which as well as being all over three incarnations timelines as well as also a couple of others dotted about here and there but it was also kind of all over the place with other people's timelines like the daleks brian the Ude, and so forth and um, so be interesting to see how it all goes but at the beginning the character of doom hasn't made a great impression i think she's eh and most people think she's terrible or hate her and the trailer even more of a negative reception looks cheap bad visual effects not so great um directing writing or sorry to say performance wise hopefully the actress is going to get better in the performance of the character as we go along maybe the writing's gonna get stronger i know big finish are probably gonna do far better than what this is because big finish about 90 percent of the time are far better than some of their competition including some of the tv including quite a lot of the tv stuff actually come to think of it so about 85 to 90 percent of the time big finish are at are on a high maybe not not quite peak levels but apart from the aquatic occasion, but certainly on a high level, they usually do their great, their magic. They usually do great stuff. Titan Comics probably also will do a good job as well, as will the, write, the writers at Doctor Who Magazine's comic department, and probably also the BBC Audio stuff. And I'm sure whoever gets to write the books will be fine, uh, fine as well. The one thing I'm interested in is the game. What's that going to tie into it? How's that going to tie in? How is... Was it East, Worth, East Side Games going to tie into it? Is there going to be a new Doctor Who game featuring Doom that's going to tie into it? Is it going to be another escape room or something? We'll see. All I know is um, these are the main players for now, plus the BBC Doctor Who social media platforms. And there's not been yet any confirmation of any other merchandise just yet. Although Titan do some of the other merchandise as well, like some of the... Uh, the like the t-shirts oh god we're gonna get another glow in the dark t-shirt with any key part of the plot again <laughs> oh god i hope not but i do hope we get another road to doomsday blu-ray that does include four to doomsday and army of ghosts doomsday and if the 11th doctor is somehow involved something from his era that somehow ties in with this i don't know maybe at the very 11th hour the 11th doctor turns up to save doom or something and we throw in the 11th hour just because it's, it's the same name <laughs> oh anyway that but that would honestly be fun though anyway so overall thoughts on doomsday reveal it's all right could be better there's a lot there's quite a few things wrong with it but Hoping that it's going to be a good multi-cross platform event like Time Lord Victorious and that the actress will probably get better in the performance and the character will be better written and directed in 
future projects, especially Big Finish, because I have full confidence in them. And I'm pretty sure the other people like Titan or Penguin uh, or whoever the Penguin hires to write the or BBC books hire to write the books or BBC Audio will do better jobs at doing and Eastside Games will probably do better get, uh, job at, write, at writing, directing uh, the character here and the actress will get better in her vocal performances and on screen uh, appearances. By the way, who wrote this one? I don't know who wrote this. I'm not sure. I have to check the Doctor Who. Um, check the Doctor Who wiki later if they've got a writer for this and there has a director as well, writer director for this. And I'm wondering if they're going to be the same ones who's going to do the finale. In which case, oh boy, um, if they bring in a Doctor, then hopefully that will hopefully sweeten the mood a bit. I don't care which one, any of them. Um. Yeah, it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna be James Goss who's overseeing this. Like he, he oversaw Time Lord Victorious at the same time he was doing Masterful. Okay, um, but yeah, I don't know if he's overseeing this, especially it's been he's been hired to do Redacted Series Two. But you know, maybe maybe he's behind it, or maybe the BBC have hired someone else to do it. And hopefully, uh, it's gonna get better as it goes along. Hopefully, this is the worst part of. Um, Doomsday is the is the announcement trailer, the introduction, and so forth. Hopefully, it's going to get better from here on out. I have full confidence in Big Finish, and I have confidence in the other um, partners to do a better job. The only one, uh, only side I think is going to be the weaker one is possibly the digital stuff, the the social media's minisodes, um, and so forth. Um, if they're anything like this, but hopefully they'll be um, they'll be better. So um, yeah, that's um, that's my point of view from Doomsday, as well as also the Unit and Monster spin-offs. Thank you for watching this um, quite long video. Sorry about that, but yeah, here comes Doomsday. Hoping it's going to get better. Hoping it's and the character of Doom will get better. Hoping it's going to get better. And yeah, maybe I'll come back later down the line with some more videos about Doom. Maybe some reviews of some of the stuff, perhaps. Maybe some things for Universals. Maybe I was supposed to do Daleks for Universals. Maybe I still will, um, but at a later point. But anyway, uh, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Oh, and as a bonus, uh, next piece of exciting news: Five Days Time will make the eight mark the eighteenth anniversary of Series One's premiere on television. Ooh, Doctor Who Series 1 will finally become of age, a legal adult, so to speak. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so, until next time, folks, see ya.